What is going on guys? Welcome back to C++ tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about conditions. So let us get right into it. So I think in the fifth video of the tutorial series here, we talked about comparison operators and their Boolean results. And we also mentioned that they are going to be very important when we get to conditions and loops. And now we're getting to conditions, which are essentially just if statements. So if you're already familiar with programming, you know what if statements are. Uh, actually, if you're programming in Java or C sharp, you actually know how to write uh, if statements, if else statements in C++ because the syntax is the exact same. So if you know how to write if else in Java, you know how to write it in C++. If you know it in Python, it's a little bit different uh, differently, but it's essentially pretty similar. So if you understand it in Python, you can also understand it in C++. And the only thing that you need to learn are the syntactic, uh, syntactical differences here. Whereas if you have never coded, if you don't know about if else statements at all, I'm going to explain it from scratch here as well. And the idea is that up until now, we had in a function a couple of statements. And yes, by the way, you saw right, I'm using namespace std, uh, because by now you should already know that this is not the best practice way, so we can do it for the sake of simplicity. However, of course, if you're working in a project, don't do it like that. Uh, it's not considered best practice. However, what we did in the main function is we always executed some stuff like C out something, end line, then we created variables and so on. And everything was executed step by step. So we said C out, define something, add something, do something. And then sooner or later, we get to the end return zero. Um, now, this is not very conditional. And as the name already says, conditions make our code more conditional, it's less linear. And this means that we have certain conditions for executing certain statements. Uh, and those conditions are specified with the so called if statement. So we say if and then in parentheses, we specify what has to be true in order for a certain block to be executed. For example, let's say we have a variable uh, int a and we input a, so we get user input for a like that. And then we say, okay, if the input that we have just given to the program here, if this input is larger than 10, then we're opening up a new block here. By the way, this is also new scope. So if we define a variable in here, it's not necessarily going to be um, uh, we're not going to be able to access it from the outside here. So this is a block of code here. And in here, we can do something, I don't know, see out your number is larger than 10, a very simple message. And then so so this block right here, if we just leave it like that, what happens is we say if a equals 10, uh, not equals 10, sorry, it's larger than 10 greater than 10. If that is the case, if this comparison here returns true, that block is going to be executed. Otherwise, it's just not going to be executed. So right now we can see if I compile this program here, um, we can see I can enter a number, let's say nine in this case, and nothing happens, we just get nine, we input nine and nothing happens. Whereas if I run this again, and enter 99, for example, it says your number is larger than 10. So as you can see, depending on the input, this block gets executed or not. Um, and if we want to also specify what happens if this condition is not true, we can use an else statement as well. So we say, if a is larger than 10, then do this. Otherwise, if this is not the case, so else, and we open up a new block here. If this is not the case, we say else see out your number is not larger than 10, you can also write is less or equal to 10. So we can go ahead and run this again. And you're going to see that uh, we have seven. And it says your number is not larger than 10. If I say 99, your number is larger than 10. If I say 10, it's going to say your not your number is not larger than 10 or greater than 10. I think greater than 10 is actually the term that we want to use here. I'm, I'm not sure if larger is correct here. Um, yeah, so what you can see here is that we have certain conditions and certain pieces of code that get executed based on that condition. Now, what do we do, however, if we want to check for multiple conditions? So let's say I want to check if a is larger than or actually, let's let's change this to 100 here. I want to know if a is greater than 100. And if it's not greater than 100, I want to know if it's at least greater than <clears throat> sorry, greater than 50. So if this is not the case, 
I want to know if it's greater than 50. And if it's neither greater than 100 nor greater than 50, I want to print something else. And in this case, I can go ahead into the else branch here and formulate another if statement. So I can say, okay, if it's not larger than 100, I can say if, so inside of the else branch here, I say if a is greater than 50, if that is the case, we can get this out in here and say your number is not greater than 100, but greater than 50. And then we can add another else branch here and say if even that is not true, we can say see out your number is not greater than 50. End line. So this is a very trivial example but we can compile it and enter something like 70 and you can see your number is not greater than 100 but greater than 50. We can do the same thing with 120, your number is greater than 100. Then we can say 40, your number is not greater than 50. If I say 50, greater, not greater than 50. If I say 100, it's not greater than 100 but greater than 50. So as you can see, we can do it like that but we can also do it in a different way. <clears throat> we can use something called else if which is essentially the same thing or a very similar thing, but it's written differently. We can say else if in one line here, else if a is greater than 50, then do something. So in this case, come on, I'm going to just simply print greater than 50. And then I can still append one else branch to those. So here I can say, less or equal to 50. And if we run this here, we're going to see that we have the same functionality. So 66, for example, is greater than 50. 12 is less or equal to 50. And 190 is greater than 100. So you can also write it like that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell if you don't want to miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.